G'day and welcome to RoboBoat 2014, the seventh annual autonomous surface vehicle competition. I'm Zuz Brooks. And I'm Christine Daly. And together we'll be bringing you all the floating robot action on this brand new challenge course. That's right. This year, the tasks for the boats have been completely revamped. So our 12 teams from the US and internationally from as far away as Taiwan and Indonesia will really have their work cut out for them programming their custom robo-boats to tackle the missions fully autonomously with no human in the loop. A lot of the students that have come through these competitions have been involved in other robotic programs. What we do with all of our events, and especially RoboBoat, is we create a real-world environment where the students have to build a boat that has all of these features that are needed to do things that the commercial world wants to see happen. This is my third year doing RoboBoat, and the UBSI Foundation has done a great job of giving students like me the opportunity to participate in these challenges and competitions. So when we hit the industrial field, we're up and running. You have a definite position of responsibility here, a chance to get your hands dirty, and you do learn a lot by initially maybe getting things wrong and redoing them and getting them right. The number of opportunities for this type of technology is, is unlimited. RoboBoat is sponsored by AUVSI Foundation and ONR, and their staff and volunteers have been out here all week, making sure the teams are guaranteed four solid days of practice on two parallel courses. This will ensure that they're familiar with the new competition elements before Saturday's qualifying sessions and Sunday's final showdown. Let's check out the challenge components of this year's course. It's basically a brand new course we have this year. So the first thing the boats have to do, which is a mandatory task, which is going basically in straight line to two sets of gates. Once they're able to do that, they're gonna start doing a series of mission tasks. Each of them are optional. The first one is to actually navigate through an obstacle course. There's a series of yellow and black buoys. They have to avoid all of them and make it through the right exit gate at the end of the course. The second one is the acoustic location. So similar to what happened when the airplane crashed in the Pacific Ocean, there's a pinger that actually emits sounds underwater and the boat needs to figure out where is the sound coming from and actually locate on which buoy it's attached, report the buoy location and its color. The next challenge is an automated docking. So we create a series of bays and we want them to go to the right bay and actually gently dock with the dock over there. And the last task we have, underwater lights. We want the team to be able to recognize the light sequence underwater, recognize which color were actually uh, triggered and actually report that over a communication protocol. Actually our students learned a lot this year. They were able to get the pattern recognition to work really well. The speed test is like my favorite thing. Like I'm like, it's like my pride and joy, like I can't wait until we do it. I think that we'll really do well. In addition to performance on the course, as always, the team gets points for their research paper and a full-on presentation in front of the judges. Well, it gives its students an opportunity to demonstrate all that they learned. Their in-water performance is really important, but here in front of the judges, it's important for them to demonstrate the academic aspects of what they got. I'm involved in this competition because three years ago I was actually a competitor. One thing I really found by being a competitor is the aspect of you're not just going to have naval architects, you're not just going to have computer scientists or mechanical engineers on the team. Everybody plays a part and if you don't have part of that team, you end up having a place where you come up short. There sure is a lot going on this year, both in and out of the water. Some of the designs, hardware and techniques are the most advanced we've seen in this competition yet. You'll definitely be hungry for a full serving of this aquatic robo action. And that's exactly what we'll be bringing you. With full recaps of the qualifying rounds coming up and then the live finals webcast starting at 1pm this Sunday. So keep your browser pointed at roboboat.org.